so no doubts then we can start today's lecture let me share the screen Screen is visible. Please let me. Know. Yes, sir, it's visible. Yes, sir. Okay. It's so, visible, sir. Okay. So thank you. So in the last lecture, we discussed the basics of electromagnetics, where we discussed the Maxwell four equations, and we assume that there is no time variation. Okay, everything is static. So charge is. Uh, either stationary or the charge is moving with a constant velocity or you can say without any acceleration. But whenever the charge is accelerated, then uh, the time varying phenomena will come into the picture. So today we will discuss uh, what happens when the charge is accelerated. Okay, so or basically we can say the time varying fields, electric field or magnetic field, both are time varying instead of static, whatever discussed in the previous lecture. Now we'll today move to the time varying fields. So we uh, let me just summarize the Maxwell four equations first. Maxwell's equations. So the first equation that we discussed is the closed surface integral of electric flux density is equal to the charge enclosed in the surface. This is the integral form in in differential form or the point form. We can write del dot D is equal to rho V. The divergence of electric flux density is equal to the So you're not audible. Hello. Yes, sir. Now can you hear me? Yes, sir. Now yes, it's audible. Yes. Yeah, now it's audible. So the second equation that we derived. So you are muted again. Uh, someone is uh, trying yeah, to so someone is mute muted. me. Uh, so can you uh, so can you make them attendees uh, just uh, you can just go to the okay. meeting sections. Yeah, uh, let me setting. let me do it. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, Allow mic for attendees. Uh, there are some option always let by uh, announcement caller joins who can present. OK, uh, only me. OK. Yeah, so the second equation is the basic nature of electric field. That is the closed line integral of electric field intensity is equal to zero. The closed line integral. So if you move in a closed line, what will happen? The total electric, uh, if you integrate electric field around that closed line, the net value will be equal to zero. And we also uh, equated, uh, means we saw the equivalent in the circuit. In the circuit, uh, this is nothing but a KVL. So total voltage, algebraic sum of the voltage inside a closed loop is equal to zero. And in the point form or the differential form, how we write? Uh, we write del cross E is equal to zero so the uh, del cross e is equal to zero means electric field will never form a closed loop that uh, means it because curl is zero means it is not rotational in nature so it will never form a closed loop it will always start one particular point and it will end at the other point suppose if, if there is a positive charge it will start from the positive charge and will uh, end at infinity it will never come back at positive charge okay it will never form a loop so that is 
the meaning of the del cross E is equal to zero. So the third equation is a basic nature of a magnetic field. Magnetic field is always forms a closed loop. So it uh, it it is given by the magnet the line uh, the closed surface integral of magnetic flux density is equal to zero. Sorry. Uh, what's actually the physical significance of current? For example. Uh, for di differentiation, the derivative, we can say that it's the rate of change of any quantity with respect to one. So actual physical significance of curl, sir, apart from the definition. Yes, so actual significance is that if something is rotational, if something is rotational, whether it is anti-clockwise or it is clockwise, okay, then it will give you some non-zero value. That's it. If it is not rotational, if it is not forming uh, a loop, then definitely it will be zero. That's it. So anything which is rotational, its curl will always be not equal to zero. It will give you some non-zero value. Similar to divergence, if something is outward, coming out of the some closed surface, so you, you can take any uh, closed surface, and if something is, if the flow is outward, it will get some uh, divergence. It will give some non-zero value. If, uh, if something is going inside, it will still give you the non-zero value. But if, if the net uh, value, that is leaving the closed surface or entering the closed surface is zero. You can see the uh, divergence is zero. That's it. So it, it totally depends uh, in the curl case whether it is rotational, the quantity is rotational or not. That's it. Sir, then if the curl of magnetic field of, of, a, of a current carrying wire will not be equal to zero in this case. Yes, it will not be equal to zero. That is the fourth equation, the ampere circuital law. Let oh. me just uh, first finish the third equation first. Oh, so you, in the differential form, del dot B equal to zero. Del dot B equal to zero. Why? It, it means the divergence of magnetic flux density is always equal to zero. That means magnetic flux will never uh, uh, be uh, uh, starting from one point and ending at other point. It will always form a closed loop. It will never be uh, outward or inward in case. Okay. So the nature of the magnetic flux is it will start from a one point and it will, it will come back to that particular point. So it will form a closed loop. That is me. Okay. So that's why it's a divergence is zero. It means it is not uh, uh, flowing outward, neither flowing inward. It is always forming a uh, It is always a circular in nature. So it is circular in nature. That's why the fourth equation of Maxwell, that is a ampere circuital law says that line integral of magnetic field intensity is equal to the current enclosing that surface or in point form we can say the curl of magnetic field intensity is not zero it is some quantity that is z that current density okay current density so you can see because magnetic field is not circular uh, sorry magnetic field is circular in nature so it is non zero value Okay, it is a non-zero value and electric field is uh, divergent in nature. So it's a non-zero value del dot d equal to rho v. So it all depends. Uh, okay, so these four equations we uh, discussed in the previous lecture, but there we assumed the time varying. Uh, uh, there we assumed the electric field and magnetic field are static in nature. Static in nature means they are not time varying. OK, but when time varying fields comes into the picture, these two equation, the equation number. Two. And the equation number four will not be satisfying. Why it will not be satisfying? Because there are two uh, laws. The next law is I'm going to talk about uh, the Faraday's law. Faraday's law. So these two equations will not be valid for time varying fields. So, uh, the first equation, third equation, or you can say the diver, uh, divergent equation will remain as it is, but the curl equation will be changing and will be modified. And what will be the modified version? We'll see from the Faraday's law first. So what Faraday's law says, the Faraday's law says in a closed loop, the voltage can be induced. In a closed loop, the voltage can be induced. However, according to this law, this Maxwell second equation, the basic nature of electric field, it is never form a closed loop. It means the closed line integral must be zero. 
but faraday's law contradicting this and it says that he did experiment and says a uh, voltage can be induced in a closed conductor if the magnetic flux through that surface changing with respect to the time if we place a closed conductor in changing magnetic flux so magnetic flux is varying with respect to time in that case the voltage can be induced in the conductor so he did experiment and uh, he took the you can say a closed conductor here you can put a galvanometer and you can uh, have a magnetic field uh, which which is varying with respect to time if if you uh, place this closed conductor in a varying magnetic flux what will happen it will indicate some value so that that means the voltage is induced in the conductor in a closed conductor okay so that's the experiment uh, done by faraday and this is the faraday's law it says that voltage can be induced in a closed conductor when the magnetic flux through the surface changes with respect to the time so the magnetic flux actually can be changed in many ways uh, either by changing uh, you 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 have studied the magnetic flux uh, magnetic flux how how you can change by varying the area by varying the angle by uh, varying the magnitude of magnetic field intensity that's it. so so basically uh, because we know what is b b is the magnetic flux density and the total magnetic flux is given by this this is the total magnetic flux b dot ds will give you the total magnetic flux so basically what is what is going to happen uh, if you change the flux by change by varying the either the value of b or the very uh, value the a uh, a means the area okay so in that case what will happen the magnetic flux will vary magnetic flux will vary that means uh, that means uh, it will produce a voltage in the closed conductor so the law of faraday's it's written as the closed line integral of electric field intensity is not equal to zero it is equal to some voltage and that voltage depends on the rate of change of magnetic flux rate of change of magnetic flux d psi m by dt where psi is the magnetic flux so this is the faraday's law and there is a negative sign comes into the picture here and this negative sign says when the magnetic flux is decreasing then voltage will be increasing it will be opposite in nature okay so if the magnetic flux is increasing voltage will be decreasing if uh, this is uh, uh, so basically that law is this negative sign is given by the lenz law so the produced voltage the voltage will be produced in the closed conductor in such a way that it will oppose the cause of it so what is the cause the cause is the changing flux if it is increasing so the flux if if flux is increasing the voltage produced in the conductor will produce another magnetic field because because of this voltage current will be flowing in the closed conductor and because of this current there will be magnetic field that is induced magnetic field induced magnetic field will be produced in such a way that it will oppose the increase in the magnetic flux that was original magnetic flux okay so that's why there is a negative sign here negative sign is given by actually the lenz law if there is no negative sign then basically it means the energy is producing 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 it is going to infinity so that's why negative sign here is very very necessary okay so if there if you don't put the negative sign that means the energy is creating but the energy cannot be created can be just converted from one form to the another form so here the magnetic flux changing magnetic flux producing a voltage that's the faraday's law and the maxwell second modified equation so this is the maxwell second modified equation so we 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 can write the second second maxwell equation is in the form of a closed line integral e dot dl is equal to minus d psi m by dt now we'll uh, write psi m in terms of uh, uh, magnetic flux density p e dot ds so just put this value here and if you put this value p dot ds so we can just write in terms of magnetic flux density because here we are only using e h b d 
D terms. We are not using Psi M terms, so that's why we have converted into B term. So now we can write. So this is the Maxwell second modified equation for time varying field. So if magnetic flux is not varying with respect to time, the right hand side will become zero and it will satisfy the basic nature of electric field. That is the second equation for static case. Maxwell's equation for static field. OK, so it will if if uh, uh, magnetic flux B is not the time varying, then the right hand side will become zero. And if right hand side is zero, then it will satisfying the basic nature of electric field. In this is uh, in the integral form Maxwell's. Second equation. In integral form. So similar uh, similarly you can just apply the Stokes theorem. So if you apply the Stokes theorem and uh, solve it, you will get its uh, differential form. The differential form will be given by this. OK, so this is the Maxwell second equation in. Point form. Or you can say differential form. So the conclusion is the voltage at a point at a time is unique. That is a Maxwell second equation in static case. Voltage cannot be induced in a closed conductor. It should be zero, but as the time varies, voltage can be produced. OK, so so that's why the farad is uh, modified and uh, this became the Maxwell second equation. Now we'll uh, uh, see what is the problem with the equation number four. That's Ampere circuit law. So Ampere's uh, uh, laws uh, was not able to explain the capacitor and its current. So we'll see what was the problem with the Maxwell's fourth equation. What was Ampere circuit law? Ampere circuit law or simply Ampere's law is. Is given by uh, let me show you here. The closed line integral of magnetic field intensity is equal to the current enclosed in the surface, right? So uh, or you can say current passing through that particular surface. So uh, this is the formula, but. If we see the capacitor. Capacitor parallel plate capacitor. I'm taking an example of a parallel plate capacitor. I'm applying AC current here. Right. So basically if you see uh, the current will start flowing in this circuit. This is a parallel plate capacitor here in between we have a air, so there is no connection between this point and this point. So basically the circuit is not closed. The circuit is not closed. But still the current is flowing. Still the. Circuit, the current will flow. In this circuit the current will flow. How? So Ampere was not able to explain because as per the Ampere circuit law. As per the Ampere circuit law, this circuit should be closed. This is a closed line integral. If the circuit is not closed. Then how it is uh, working for the capacitor? How the current is flowing in the circuit? So he was not able to explain. So let me uh, just explain about it. How the current is flowing? So suppose I am applying some voltage V m sine omega t. Okay, I am applying some AC current. When you apply AC, what will happen in the first half? In the first half of the AC, in the first half of the AC, this capacitor plate will become positive. OK, because this is positive. This is negative end, so this will become negative. Right, but what is going to happen in the another half in the next half? This is going to change. The polarity is going to change, so this capacitor plate will become negative. And this capacitor plate will become positive. So what is basically happening? Here, if you see. The polarity on the plate changing. 
so basically the charge value the charge it is becoming in at what and at what particular point of time it is positive and another particular point of time it is negative so if this frequency is very high if this frequency is very high what is going to happen this changing the magnet electric flux on these two parallel plates so basically capacitor is itself a you can say uh, all, uh, when uh, when the charge is on the plates is changing with respect to time basically you can say the flux density is changing so electric flux changing and this is the cause of the current this is the cause of the current so the effect is a current and that current is known as a displacement current that current is known as a displacement current so basically this fourth equation is the inverse of faraday's law the second equation for what faraday's law says faraday's law says the changing magnetic flux changing magnetic flux is a form of a voltage is a form of a voltage a changing magnetic flux can produce a voltage then maxwell said that the changing electric flux must produce a current and that current is nothing but a displacement current and so what is going to happen in this circuit between this and this what is happening the electric flux is changing so electric flux is changing plus minus minus plus plus minus so it is changing very rapidly so basically the electric flux is changing with respect to time and this is a form of a current this is the cause of the current so the current will flow in this reason also that current is known as a displacement current denoted by id and whatever the current is flowing in the conductor that is the conductional current that is the conductional current so maxwell modified this equation and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you can write the closed line integral of magnetic field intensity is not equal to the conductional current but it is also the summation of the two currents conductional current plus the displacement current but what is going to happen when the one current is flowing another current will be not flowing so you can say that uh, when ic is maximum id will be zero when id is maximum ic will be zero so conductional current will not flow in this uh, in this uh, in this air gap in the gap of between the capacitor and the displacement current will not flow in the conductor okay so these two are the complementary to each other and they form the closed loop okay so here the ic current will flow here the id current will flow the total current you can say ic plus id in the differential form you can write del cross h equal to jc plus jd where jc is the conductional current density flows between the plate uh, sorry flows in the conductor and jd is the displacement current density flows on the between the plates so what is the value of jd jd can be calculated actually based on the continuity equation so i am not current uh, i am not able to i uh, means it's not a time to explain the continuity equation so i will just write what is the continuity equation continuity equation says that the divergence of the uh, you can say the current density divergence of the current density is equal to i'll just explain this uh, briefly the rate of change of the volume charge density okay so suppose you have a closed surface this closed surface this is a closed surface this is not an open surface this is a closed surface so it it must have some volume okay and something is flowing outward something is flowing outward okay something is flowing outward when something is flowing outward there must be net decrease inside this closed surface okay and if this which is coming outward if it is a current density if it is a current density then what will happen inside inside that that means the charge must be 
decreasing in size so there will be actually a negative sign also uh, but uh, for just the formula i'll just uh, uh, explain you in in a way that del dot jd equal to carl rho v by carl t because we know the current is given by dq by dt right current is given by dq by dt rate of change of charge so when charge changes with respect to time the current start flowing so when j is coming outward from a closed surface that means there must be something which is decreasing inside that closed surface and that value is nothing but the volume charge density so rho v must be decreasing inside this that's why the current is flowing outward okay and if you are uh, considering j instead of i so what will be there uh, in place of q it will be rho v okay so so this is the continuity equation which says that there must be something decreasing inside the closed surface that will lead to the outward flow and that outward flow will if you assume the outward flow is the current density then the cause which is decreasing is the volume charge density so that's the continuity equation and using this continuity equation and the gauss law Uh, because we know rho v is equal to del d right we'll just put this here and if you derive you can write j d is equal to curl d by curl d okay curl d by curl d so you can use this and uh, uh, you can modify the maxwell equation in this uh, using this d because we are d is the electric flux density now you can see also from here the rate of change of electric flux density gives you the uh, displacement current density and that's the we explained in the capacitor id id is because of the changing electric flux changing electric flux and you can see here also jd is nothing but curl d by curl d or if you write id id is nothing but jd dot ds right so you can write curl d by curl t dot ds simply you can write like this so now we can write the maxwell modified fourth equation in integral form first h dot dl is equal to conductional current plus the displacement current and the uh, the point form del cross h is equal to jc plus curl d by curl t this is the maxwell modified fourth equation and in a static case static case this will not vary electric flux with respect to time will not vary this will become zero right in the static case and you will get the same equation as we as we discussed in the last lecture for the static case these two equations right so basically the modif modified version here is you have to add a one quantity this okay you have to add this quantity here and you can say here curl b by curl d similarly you have to add here a quantity id here you have to add a quantity jd so these are the maxwells four equations Okay, in in uh, for time varying fields so there are two equations that we uh, just discussed like equation number 2 and 4 which leads to electromagnetic wave generation so let me just write these two equations and explain you the phenomena behind this em wave generation so the the th uh, the maxwell uh, second equation what is the maxwell second equation del cross e equal to curl b by curl t or you can say curl h by curl t and the maxwell fourth equation del cross h is equal to curl d by curl t instead of curl d by curl t we can write curl e by curl t sala plus jc jc is conductional current density that is given by sigma e sigma okay so these are the two equation which are very very important which explains the phenomena of em wave uh, propagation okay how it 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 explains so we know if we have a voltage if we have a voltage 
then because of the voltage we will have a electric field. So basically if cos is the voltage then the effect will be electric field, right? If we have a current, if we have a current as a cause, if we have a current as a cause, then the effect will be magnetic field, right? Then the effect will be magnetic field. Now I am assuming this electric field which was produced because of the voltage is varying with respect to time. I'm assuming this electric field is time varying. If this electric field which is generated using this voltage is time varying electric field, then what will happen? This will uh, time varying according to Maxwell uh, uh, third uh, fourth equation, the time varying magnetic field, oh, sorry, the time varying electric field is nothing but a current is nothing but a current. So basically it is producing a current, right? So this if uh, now this will become the cause, the time varying mag electric field will become the cause and this current will be the effect using Maxwell's fourth equation. So this will produce this and because we know the current is produced and this current which is produced due to the time varying electric field will produce its magnetic field, right? And this magnetic field will also be time varying. Why this will be time varying? Because the current is also time varying. If this current is time varying, this magnetic field will also be a time varying. And we, from the very basic uh, this equation, Maxwell's second equation, modified form, the time varying magnetic field is a form of a voltage. The time varying magnetic field is a form of a voltage. So now this time varying magnetic field will become the cause. Cause of what? The voltage. So it will become the effect. Right. So what is happening? A cycle is becoming right. If you can see a loop is forming. Voltage producing electric field, electric field producing current, current producing magnetic field, magnetic field producing voltage and so on. Right. So basically, these two equations are very important, which tells you E, if it is a time varying, it will produce a magnetic field. If magnetic field is time varying, it will produce an electric field. So it is a closed loop it's forming, right? So you can say electric field, if, if electric field is denoted like this, then magnetic field will be like this. Electric field magnetic field. Why I'm uh, uh, means explaining perpendicular to each other because whenever they, uh, they uh, means propagate E field and H field will be 90 degree with respect to each other. Why this 90 degree term comes because of the differential operator because of the differential operator here, right? Because we know if you take the uh, the derivative of a sine it will be a cosine. So there will be 90 degree phase will come. So uh, the more explanation will be uh, explained in the uh, I think third semester when you have uh, your electromagnetic course, right? So this is just the basics of the EM wave, how the EM wave propagates. So electric field will produce magnetic field, magnetic field will produce electric field. Only the thing is you must have one time harmonic source at one end. OK, that's the uh, thing. So that's we already said in the, in the previous uh, uh, lecture also in the last lecture. What I said electric. Uh, let me show you what is the cause of the radiation is. Non uniform velocity. So when we have a time varying. Charge or you can say moving uh, with the non uniform velocity, then it will generate electric field as well as magnetic field. Basically, these two will sustain each other. E will generate H, H will generate E, and they will flow like that. Okay. So, so let me uh, draw the EM wave, how it propagates basically. Okay. So, I will show you uh, one, uh, uh, one case when E field and H field will flow and they will flow perpendicular to the direction of the propagation. So if you assume the direction of propagation is Z, suppose the EM wave is propagating in Z direction, okay? And 
this is your x direction. Suppose this is your x direction, then you can apply the right hand rule. Then outward direction will be the y direction. OK, so uh, so the direction of propagation. Uh, it will always follow a right hand rule. Right hand rule says that electric field direction. Cross magnetic field direction will be the direction of the propagation will be the direction of the propagation. So if I am assuming the direction of propagation is Z. Z, I am assuming this is the direction of propagation of EM wave. If I am assuming the direction of propagation, if EM wave is propagating in Z direction, then uh, E field must be in X direction and H field must be in Y direction or you can say E field must be in minus Y direction. H field must be in minus X direction. Sorry, plus X direction. You, you can take any other case also. There are many other cases based on that. So it must follow the right hand sequence rule. So I'm just taking this example X cross Y equal to Z. So uh, let me first uh, draw the E field. E field will be. This. So if you see. The electric field will be like this. It will be pointing towards X direction. It will be pointing towards X direction. The arrows shows the strength of the field. The arrows shows the strength of the electric field. OK. So you can see the electric field is in X direction. E field is in X direction. But the variations are along Z direction. The variations are along Z direction. OK, so uh, you, uh, next uh, I will plot. You can say here E X Z. OK, so basically electric field is a function of Z and time. It will also change with respect to time. Uh, uh, currently I'm showing only the Z, so uh, I'm not writing T here. I'm just showing for a Z. So E electric field is a function of Z and in the direction of X. So that's what I have plotted. Next I will plot the magnetic field. So magnetic field will be. In Y direction. Y direction. Magnetic field will be in Y direction. These arrows shows the strength of the magnetic field. Black arrows. OK. Sorry. Y direction. So you can see this is the H field. Wave is in Y direction. So it is H Y Z. It's a function of Z, but in the direction of Y. This is the direction of Y. OK, so uh, E field will be in X direction. H field be in Y direction and they will uh, forming EM wave. So this is the EM wave. Now you can see E field H field direction of propagation. So this is uh, the wave that you will see at any particular time at any particular time T1 suppose. Now what will happen after some time? After some time, because this wave is propagating in Z direction, so I will now plot uh, at another time T1. Sorry, uh, if if you assume this is at time T, at time T1, this is the wave. Okay. Now I will uh, I will uh, draw one another wave at time T2. After some time, what will happen? This wave, the whole pattern will move in the direction of Z. So basically what is going to happen in the the electric field, the electric field instead of starting from here, it will start from here. Like this, so this will be zero.
like this. Okay, so you can say like this. And what will happen to the magnetic field? Magnetic field will also be starting from here. Okay, so this is the magnet. So what is happening? You you see, this is at time t1. This is at time t2. So this much distance is covered by the electromagnetic wave in time t2 minus t1. So suppose this uh, time taken by the wave is uh, capital T, then if this time is capital T, then what will happen? It will be traveling up to a wavelength of lambda. So the distance traveled, the distance traveled, if you assume this distance is uh, D1 and this is D2, then the total distance travel is D2 minus D1. I'm assuming it as a T, any time T. So when this T will become the time period, total time period, then distance will become the lambda. And the ratio of these two, you can say uh, wavelength distance traveled upon time. So what is uh, the formula of velocity? Distance per unit time so this is this will give you the velocity of the em wave so how to calculate the velocity of em wave and uh, this is generally known as a phase velocity the phase is changing with respect to time so lambda upon t is known as a phase velocity of the em wave and how it measures you have to uh, check at particular time t1 and a particular time t2 based on the difference you can say d upon t d upon t so this is time taken, distance traveled, take the ratio, it will tell you the velocity of the EM wave. So in the free space, electromagnetic wave will flow, uh, will move with the velocity of light, 3 into 10 to power 8 meter per second. But uh, depending on the different, different mediums, the velocity of uh, EM wave will change. That you will uh, study in the third semester. Okay, so this is all about the basics of EM wave and how EM electromagnetic waves are generated in the free space. So the next uh, part is the antenna. The next part that I am going to discuss is antenna. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, before antenna, I have a question. Means... Yes, sure, sure. Sir, the magnet, time bearing magnetic field mm -hmm. causes electricity, na? means current. Yes, 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 yes. Time varying electric field will produce current. Yes. Time varying magnetic field. Time varying magnetic field. Okay. So means it, it formed current. Uh, in it is because of current. It is because of current. Time varying current. When you have a time varying current, then the effect will be time varying magnetic field. Right? Time, time varying magnetic field also produce current now. Because of which phenomena? First, it will produce voltage. That yes, voltage sir. will produce current. Yes. Yes, sir. yes that's uh, the way it forming a cycle. Uh, but it means if we, we put a charge in free space mm -hmm. and uh, uh, magnetic field, we apply time varying magnetic field. Mm -hmm. It rotate in circle. See, it uh, if the charge is static it is not moving okay and you have a static magnetic field it is not varying with respect to time then nothing will happen but if it is time varying then that then you have to find out how it is affecting it will affect but how it is affecting that will be the uh, you have to check it will affect sir as per means uh, time varying magnetic field effect we got that means electrics means the electron or the particle will move means the charged particle will move in circle yes uh, circle it will way. affect that's what i said it will affect yes sir and uh, the current it flows means at every point its speed will gain now means due to uh, change in voltage because mm. if voltage means change means gain in voltage that's why the field accumulate that very charge to further movement. Na? 
Yes, yes, yes. At some means, at very long time, what would be the speed of electron? Means it is speed means reach above the monkey C means it will saturate up to a value because it cannot go till it cannot increase up to infinity. That you have to derive the relation, but definitely it will be finite value. So the magnetic means current will flow because of change in voltage means increasing voltage cause uh, current which mm -hmm. propagate the charge. Mm -hmm. And in circular loop, mm -hmm. if the next step will higher voltage, then it will go further. See here lens law comes into the picture. You are not considering this negative sign actually. So negative sign will make saturation so whatever the voltage produced because of increasing magnetic flux okay that voltage will produce that current and that current will be producing its own magnetic flux and that own magnetic flux induced magnetic flux will oppose the original magnetic flux okay it will not support it will oppose understanding the point this yes, negative sir. sign yes. into comes into the picture. So this the negative sign, yeah. The magnetic field which caused means a voltage or loop. This also form a magnetic field uh, which resists the charge particle or something now, which conclude the saturation point. Yes, yes. Okay. And the second one is uh, the part of EM that you say that due to differential equation of sine theta difference to cos. That's uh -huh. why we say that they are perpendicular. Right, right, means right. The thing, <laughs> this thing is not means. See, I'm just explaining uh, because I cannot go into the detail because the once you see the derivation, uh, suppose I am uh, writing here E sine. Is it not is in? Means See one one thing here. Order. Let me let me show you. Here I'm writing the time, okay. And what I'm plotting is in uh, space, okay. So so same thing will happen in the space also. So basically, E and H will be specially orthogonal in time as well as in the space. Here I have explained just in the uh, time uh, phenomena that uh, there will be 90 degree phase difference between E and H, but there will be 90 degree. They will be perpendicular in space as well. X, Y that I mean to say means if E is in X direction, Y will be in uh, sorry, H will be in Y direction, something like that. Means this is not the means. No, this no, part this, is not just, uh, this I have just uh, uh, told you so that you can uh, understand little bit. You can connect it with it, right? Uh, this is not the uh, uh, correct explanation. The correct explanation is uh, based on the derivation that I, I I I will explain in the next semester. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you. Sir. So here you can just uh, see that uh, one if uh, there is a sign, then another will be cos. So because of the differential operator, 90 degree a value will come. So same thing will, is going to happen in the space also. Uh, because we always uh, take uh, the E and H uh, uh, means uh, varying with respect to sine, cosine like that. So whenever you have a differential operator, it will, where it will be having because we have uh, discussed a uh, vector special derivative operator del. So del will come here. You, if you see here, del, del is coming here. Del so is, we are is, not in easy way to play in space. So that's why I think. Yes, I that's why I am uh, telling if E is X. Right, then you are taking del of x. It will become perpendicular to that, right? Is it? Yes, sir, no? yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So it's perpendicular to that. That means y or z, right? And it hmm. must satisfy e cross h is equal to direction of propagation. So that's why I am saying it will become y. This is because of this del operator. So it is 90 degree in time because of this differential operator and this is also a differential operator but in space okay so because uh, of this del x will become y means e if it's e is in x direction h will become in y direction so 90 degree you can say will come here because of this del operator in space and because of this de uh, differential operator uh, 90 degree phase shift will come sir i get but not in 
that way that I can explain someone. But okay, next semester we will get. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other doubts? Okay, so no more doubts. Then we'll uh, discuss about the antenna. So what is an antenna? So, so, so suppose uh, you have. Uh, so till now, whatever we have discussed in the free space, this is the free space. Right. EM wave. So basically EM wave propagates in the free space, right? And what happens in the guided wave? Guided guided wave means uh, suppose you have a Optical transmission wave. line. Yeah, or you have a transmission line. Suppose you have a transmission line, right? You, you are applying input here. So the current will flow in this, okay? And if this frequency is very high, input frequency is very high. So till now you have studied about uh, uh, network theory it means a basic circuit in a basic circuit you have some input here and you have some resistance some inductance or some capacitance something like that okay so what is what what happens some current start flowing something that uh, and these inductors and resistors are fixed at a particular point so there is no voltage drop here there is no voltage drop here nothing is happening you are assuming this point and this point are at same potential value if there is a potential difference, what will happen? If there is a potential difference, then drop will happen here also. It means dropping potential means it must be some uh, resistance, inductance or capacitance, right? So when you have input with very high frequency value, what happens if the frequency of the input is very, very high? By the time the input reaches to this point, by the time the input reaches to this point, the input at this point will change. Because if you see, this is your input wave. This is your input wave. I'm just explaining briefly. I'm not going to the details. I'm just uh, telling you the concept behind the distributed element. This is known as a lumped element. Lumped element means the element is fixed at a particular point. Okay, but uh, the distributed concept comes into the picture when the frequency of the input is very high when the frequency of the input is very high. So I'm showing two examples. OK, this is low frequency. This is high frequency. So when the frequency is high. This is you can say with respect to time and uh, space also. Suppose this this uh, space Z. So you have to now actually imagine. Not only X, Y, Z, including T also. So there are four coordinates X, Y, Z, T. There are four coordinates X, Y, Z, T. So here uh, uh, when the wave, uh, when the input goes along the space, along the Z axis, I'm assuming if it is a, along the Z axis, what happens the input reaches if the frequency is very high? This is point A, this is point B. Suppose at point B the input reached at this point. This is point B. And this is point A. So there is a huge difference between the value. Uh, let me take another uh, point instead of this. Let me take. Uh, this point and this point. Yeah, this point B. So at point B the value is minus something and at point a the value is something else some positive value so there is a potential difference between a and b when the frequency is very high but when the frequency is low this is point a and this is point b these are almost same these are almost same if i have not uh, corrected properly if i uh, if i plot it correctly then a and b will have the same value same magnitude, almost same magnitude. Let me plot like this. This is A. This is B. The values are almost same. The values are almost same. But when the frequency is high, when the frequency is high, A will be here somewhere, B will be here somewhere. They will have some potential difference. Okay. So 
the uh, there will be potential difference so that means this line itself has some resistance some inductance some capacitance so that's the actually you can say the distributed concept so a resistance capacitance inductance is distributed all over the line so there is a potential drop all over the line it is not fixed to a particular resistance or capacitance so it is not uh, lumped so when the frequency is very high in that case even the conductor wire will have potential drop that cannot be neglected that cannot be neglected so uh, so when the frequency becomes high this distribution concepts con comes into the picture right so this is the concept of transmission line so what happens uh, and uh, when this becomes very high and the distance between these two is very less the distance between these two wires is very less here the plus uh, you can say the current will flow in this direction in uh, here it the current will flow in this direction these will produce its own magnetic field and uh, because there is a voltage difference it will have some electric field so all these things will cancel each other but when this distance will becomes large when this distance the distance between these two wires becomes large or basically when you flare it when you flare it so suppose you have a transmission line and you flare it like this so the distance between these two is becoming large when the distance is becoming large what what is going to happen it will going to radiate it is going to radiate the em waves in this manner and you if you further if you further make it like this 90 degree make it like this the current will be in the same direction the current will be in the same direction so it will be upward and upward also like this so this fin th here it will cancel each other but here it is adding it is adding so basically the electric field will and e and h will fill will, will be flowing in the uh, free space so antenna is a device basically which is the connection between the vi waves and the em waves because whatever the flow is there in this medium here it is v and i form right that you have studied in your circuit theory current will flow voltage will be there and whatever in the free space is e and h form so this is known as e and h wave this is known as v and i wave so the antenna is basically converts one wave to the another wave or you can say it is just a transducer which converts vi wave into eh waves or vice versa so if the uh, antenna is working as a transmitter it will convert vi wave into the eh waves if it is working as a receiver then it will convert eh waves into vi wave so that's the principle of antenna so uh, with this uh, I uh, conclude. Uh, so what what we have discussed the basic principle of the antenna radiation and uh, one more thing. Uh, every you can say uh, he, here I have shown that it is uh, radiating right. It is radiating in e, 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 e and H wave. So because of every VI wave there must be some radiation somewhere it will be radiation is here also. In, in terms of VI uh, electric field and magnetic field because of this current there is a magnetic field but they are cancelling each other so radiation is cancelled here but here the radiation is not cancelled because they are far away from the point so you can say uh, there must be two currents in opposite direction uh, uh, this is the actually the phenomena of a dipole antenna so you can say this is plus this is minus okay and the distance between these two values must be very very large if the distance is not large then they will cancel each other and uh, there will be no net radiation okay so this is all about the basics of electromagnetics and the antenna if you have any doubts please let me know no sir Thank you, sir. It's no doubt. OK, thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, could you please share this file? OK, sure.